Welcome back to another one of my shitty vlogs. In this shitty vlog, I'm gonna give you an update on the Django website that I'm building with Socket. So the real-time chat website that I've been building, which I'm later going to integrate into an Android app. So I've done pretty much about another week's worth of work on it, and I just wanted to kind of update you with the progress. There's a lot of kind of cool features that I've integrated, and I wanna share kind of the things that I'm, uh, I guess, battling with as a developer uh, in terms of like the choices I'm gonna make to solve the problems that I'm running into. So first, let's just start by like going to the website and taking a look at the features that I've implemented so far. And then I'm gonna talk about the problems that are kind of on the horizon. Okay, so on the right here, I have a browser that's logged into an account. And if you watched my previous video, you saw kind of these features already. So I can, you know, log out. I'll just show you what it looks like to log out. I could register a new account, I could log in. I'm just gonna log in with my account. And then that gives me access to the website. I can go to my account by clicking here. It shows some information. You should have already seen all of this. I can update this account by clicking update. You know, I could choose a new photo. So if I click here, click one of these, I could, I could crop this image and select it if I wanted to. Uh, one feature that wasn't here last time you watched was this hide email feature. So if I was to click this on, when other users visit my profile, they can't see my email. So this will be hidden from them. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'll go over to the browser over here and just search for Mitch. This is actually a new feature also, this search feature. So if I search for Mitch, uh, you could search for anything. Like if I just press J, there's a couple other users there. If I just pressed M, there's a couple users. Well, anyway, here's Mitch. And if I click on Mitch, notice that the email is hidden. So whether I'm friends with him or not, if he chooses to hide his email through this little ticker right here, the email will be hidden. So that's kind of a nice little feature. So now let's go back to home. And I've just showcased another one of the features, which is the search feature. So if I uh, type anything up here, it's going to search for uh, users that match that query. So in this case with M, there's Maisie and there's Mitch. Notice that it says we are not friends in both these cases because I'm not logged in in this browser. So let's log in. I'm gonna log in with Maisie, I guess, because why not? Maisie at Tabian.ca. And no, this is not a real email, so don't send her or him an email. Now I'm gonna log in. Now notice I'm logged in with Maisie. I can go to her account. She's got her email, her username, update, change password, all the same kind of stuff. Also, I've added this uh, kind of a friends feature now. So if I click on friends, these are all the people that I'm friends with. It, uh, it shows their, their profiles and it shows that I can send them a message and then it kind of just shows that we're friends over here. So if I click on, I guess I'll just click on their profile. It takes me to their profile where I have a couple options. I can see their friends. I could send them a private message or I could unfriend them by clicking on this right here. So let's actually unfriend Jess. Just, uh, no, actually let's unfriend Mitch. Am I friends with Mitch? Let's take a look. No, I'm not friends with Mitch. So let's, let's become friends with Mitch and I'll show you the friend request kind of system. So if I send Mitch a friend request, first of all, the, the real-time notifications aren't sent up yet, but I will get a notification over here if I refresh the browser. So notice if I refresh, there we go, it says Maisie sent you a friend request and I can either accept or decline and it shows how long ago this this uh, I got this request. So I guess this is actually a good opportunity to talk about the, the next hurdle in development that I've been thinking about. And I've thought a lot about this and I think I've come up with a good way, but I still definitely got to test this. So the, the hurdle here is notification. So I've built the notification system as you saw. I can get friend requests, I can, um, get uh, pending chat messages, which actually maybe before I continue talking about the next issue, let me just quickly show that to you. So if I was to accept Maisie's friend request, this gets updated, it says you accepted Maisie's friend request, that's all great. Also, if I refresh this, I should have another notification saying, hey, you are friends with Maisie. So again, this isn't real time yet, but that's the next hurdle what, which we're gonna talk about. So if I refresh this, it'll say this view is now changed because now we're friends and I can send Mitch a message. So let's see what happens when I send Mitch a message. So this will open up a chat between between Mitch and Maisie, a private chat. So there's some other chat messages from when I was testing before, but uh, let's let's send some new ones. So notice, just pay attention that Mitch is not connected to this chat right now. He's not viewing the socket currently. So if I was to just type, hey, from Maisie, uh, and then go over to Mitch's browser over here and refresh it. Notice, there we go, we get a new notification from Maisie and there's the message and it says, hey. So let's send another one. This is another message and I send that from Maisie. If I now refresh the browser, there it's now showing the most current, the most current message that I've received from Maisie. So this is, uh, this is the real-time chat feature. Now if I was to click on this, it takes me to the chat with Maisie, this private chat. It says Mitch is connected and I can say, hey Maisie, uh, you know, I'm now in the chat and then Maisie knows. Cool, you're in. 
So that's that's how the private chat is going to work. And obviously the material design here looks a little ugly. I still need to fix this up. I kind of want to make it look like Facebook Messenger. That's sort of what I'm thinking other than, you know, all the other features that Facebook Messenger has. But just generally speaking, if it looks like Facebook Messenger, that's that's what uh, I would say that looks pretty good. So let's go back to home and let's play around with this other stuff. Also notice the chat notifications disappear after the user reads them. So because Mitch joined the chat room, read the message, there's no more pending uh, pending messages so it gets removed as a notification so now let's go to Maisie's profile and I'm going to unfriend Maisie and let's go home and take a look at what notifications I've got so Mitch accepted your friend request which was the first one then I became friends with Mitch and now you are no longer friends with Mitch because I've just kind of unadded Maisie so if I send her another friend request over here she should get a request it says Mitch sent you a request I could also cancel this from Mitch's end so if I went to I could cancel it here uh, like this and if I refresh this that notification will go away uh, also, there's a different way you can accept if you are getting a friend request. So I'll send Maisie another one. If I refresh this, it says, hey, Mitch sent you a friend request. If I click on the notification, not on the buttons, it takes me to Mitch's profile. And I have an option up here to accept a friend request. So I can either accept or decline. If I click accept, boom, me and Mitch are now friends. I refresh this, you see that we're now friends. So now, as I said, this the next kind of thing that I'm going to be battling with is the real time feel of the notification. So I can send requests, I can accept them, I can decline them, I can cancel them, I can open up a private chat between another user, I can send the messages. If they don't see them, they will get a, a, a notification saying, hey, there's some messages, a new message basically, and it shows the most recent one. So there's a lot of things here. Uh, you can also search for users, view their profiles, uh, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, next thing is the real time, uh, real time notification. So how how are we going to do this? Now I've I've thought a lot about this, and I think there's basically kind of two major ways that I could go about this, or two good options. One option, which is the option that I'm not going to do, is I could create kind of um, a bunch of sockets. So like if a user, as soon as a user logs into the website, basically, or as soon as they open the browser, they log into a socket, and that in that socket channel. I would have all of the notifications related to that user being funneled through that channel. So if there was a new friend request, a new chat message, whatever, it would go into that channel and that user would always be viewing that channel. Therefore, I would always get those notifications. So basically, the first option is use channels, use sockets and use channels to get the notifications. The second way that I was thinking is to use Ajax, so asynchronous Ajax calls on uh, in kind of the base HTML file of this. So no matter where they are, they're going to see these, these notifications and just do a request every, like I was thinking four to five seconds, do a request and say, Hey, are there any new notifications? And that would, that would solve the problem. So I would just create an Ajax call every four to five seconds, do that Ajax call on a loop. So as, as long as the browser is open, keep doing that call, get those notifications and then display them in the top bar, kind of like Facebook does. So in Facebook, you know, at the top kind of right, there's uh, a notification section. It says like a little red number. If you have like new messages or new notifications, I would do the same kind of thing. So I would have an Ajax call every four to five seconds, say, hey, database, is there any new notifications for this user? If there is, increment the number. And then if they click on it, they get taken to either the notification page or they'll get kind of like a, a pullout on the page like Facebook does. I'll probably end up doing that. And then it shows uh, the notifications in, in a list. So, uh, so I've decided I'm, I'm definitely going to try the Ajax, Ajax method first. The, the only real kind of hurdle that I see or limitation potentially is can the server handle all of those requests? Because if it, you know, if you can imagine if you have a couple of users logged in and each of them is making an Ajax call every like four seconds to the database, if you have like, you know, 10,000 users logged in or something like that, that's a lot of requests. So my only concern is, can the server handle that? Um, the reason, and, I, and I'm going to test this, and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to test it in just a second here. Now, the reason I chose, or I'm going to go down the Ajax route first and kind of only use the socket way if I absolutely have to, is because I'm not really sure that the server could handle all those open sockets either. Like, you know, same scenario, say you have 10,000 users signed in, each of them has an open connection to their, you know, their notification channel, I guess you could say, 
that would probably be pretty hard on the server too. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Coupled coupled with also all of the other sockets that are already going to be open for private chats, you know, like, like you saw there, every user, every time they make a private chat and they're chatting, there's a socket open. You know, I'm not really sure what the server overhead there is like either, but I have a I have an inclination that the, that the socket method is going to be much harder on the server than the, you know, an Ajax call every four seconds. So what I'm going to do to test this is I'm going to do go down the Ajax route, first of all, and I'm going to make a I'm going to I'm going to kind of push my server really hard and see how it handles it. So what I'll do is I'll probably make an I'll, I'll write like a, a script that makes an Ajax call every I don't know, 20 milliseconds. I'll, I'll make it shorter if the Ajax call can successfully uh, make make the call and return in that amount of time. I'll make it 10 milliseconds if I can. I think I said 20 seconds. I meant 20 milliseconds if I said that. So every 20 mil milliseconds, make an Ajax call, get the notifications, update the UI. And what I'll do is I'll up, I'll open like, you know, 20 or more tabs or something like that. And I'll just see how the server handles it. And like I said, if I can decrease that time uh, from 20 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds and still have the call go successfully through, I'll do that. And that should give me a lot of, that should give me a lot of uh, requests. And that should really, that would, that would test the server. So if I was doing one every, you know, 20 milliseconds, say that would be five every hundred milliseconds. So 50 every second. So 50 requests every second per tab that I have open. So if I open 20 tabs, I would be doing uh, 50 times 20, whatever that is, 50 times two is a hundred times 10. So that's a uh, hundred times 10. That's a thousand requests a second. I just stopped and used my calculator to make sure I didn't screw that math up. That was right. So that, that would be a thousand requests a second. So it's still actually a little low. Um, so what I would do in that case is just try and like decrease the amount of time between the requests, whatever, whatever I, it would take. Like I would try and get the requests up to like, uh, well, a thousand a second isn't bad because if I'm making the request, if I, in production, I'm going to do it once every four seconds, that would be, uh, that would be equivalent to 4,000 every four seconds. So if I could just double that, like if I could get the milliseconds from 20 milliseconds to 10, do that, that would give me 8,000 requests every four seconds, which is a, I mean, that's a pretty good test. Like if you have, if you have a server up and you have 8,000 users at once, actively interacting with your website like that's that's insane that's a pretty good load so I, I think at that point you would be able to like sit down and reassess things and say okay how can we optimize this so I think you know that's a, this is a good that would be a good amount to get your website started very few people probably none of you who are watching right now definitely not me have ever have a, had a website where you would have you know a thousand or two thousand users making requests every second that would you'd have, you'd be a very happy, happy person. So yeah, that's pretty much the progress that I have right now. That's the stuff that I'm dealing with. That's just the problems that I'm going to be kind of working at, uh, you know, today and probably early next week. And then once everything is working and everything is in order, I will start building the Android app to basically do everything that the, that you can do on the website, but on the app. And, you know, of course I'm going to be, uh, catering this to like how long I want the course to be. But as of right now, I have a, I have a pretty good, I think I could get all of the features at the website on onto the app in like a decent amount of time. Um, and then, and then I'll make, I'll start making the course for the website and I'll start and then probably produce that, get that out. And then I'll make the course for the Android app. So again, I guess just to summarize, I'll, I'll share, I don't know if, you know, you might have not watched my previous video where I talked about the technologies that I'm using to build these things. Uh, so I'll just kind of quickly uh, give kind of some stats for all of you nerds out there who want to know what technologies I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using Django for the web development. That's the web development framework for Python. That's my favorite kind of web development tool. That's how I built my website. That's how I would build any website today. I'm going to use Django channels for the sockets, uh, bootstrap for the material design, uh, pretty straightforward stuff for the website. I got a couple third-party libraries on the website for like cropping images, but nothing, nothing major. Everything's pretty much just I built using Bootstrap, Material Design, all that kind of stuff. Um, on the server side, when we put this into production, I'm going to be using Postgres, a Postgres database. Going to be using DigitalOcean to host it. Going to be using Redis to facilitate the socket connections with Django. You have to use Redis. 
or I'm not sure what else you could use. There's probably other options, but I'm going to use Redis. Uh, probably use Digital Ocean Spaces for the images and the media that's saved on the server. And yeah, then the Android app will be built with, you know, standard, you know, Kotlin, uh, MVI architecture. We'll do uh, clean architecture, so I'll do use cases. I might write tests. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be doing any, any testing. I know a lot of people want me to write them, but I'm kind of sick of writing tests. I just did like, you know, from like January until like, I don't know, July or something. I did like pretty much nothing but testing stuff, so I'm kind of sick of testing. Uh, so Kotlin coroutines, flows and channels, that uh, we'll use retrofit for the network request. We'll use room for the caching. Oh, very important, we'll use OKHTTP OK for the socket connections. And I think that pretty much summarizes all the most important technologies. I probably missed something. Oh, dependency injection, I'll use Hilt. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm starting to ramble, so I think I'm going to end this video. If you haven't watched the video that came before this one where I talked about this, you go to my YouTube channel, Coding with Mitch, so youtube.com slash Coding with Mitch. If you want to learn about Android development, if you're here to, because you're an Android developer and you follow my website or you follow my YouTube channel because you want to learn about Android development, the real good stuff is on my website, so definitely go check that out. Uh, if you're curious about what people are saying about my membership, go up to, I'll show you. Go to my website, go to codingwithmitch.com, Com, go up here, go to more and go to testimonials. If you're curious, you know, I got over 812 testimonials right now with an average rating of 4.99. I only have a couple like one star ratings. And that was because that was actually because people, uh, I think two people forgot to cancel their memberships and then they were billed and then they got mad at me because they forgot. I, I refunded them. So I don't really know what their problem was. But anyway, those are the only one star reviews, nothing to do with Android development. So if you want to improve your Android skills, Go to codingwithmitch.com and do that because I make the best courses out there, the best on the internet. Looking at you, Florian. One last thing before I go, I forgot to mention that I'm doing a live podcast tomorrow with Low Carb Rob. So if you liked the interview that I had with him uh, last week, I guess, he's a he's a freelance Android developer. He's been a freelance Android developer for eight years. He's had a really cool career. And, and uh, you know, I personally always stay away from freelancing, away from client work, because the money you get per unit of stress, I find to be not a good ratio. So, but, but he makes it seem pretty cool and he actually makes me want to think about taking on client work. Anyway, we're doing that. We're going to do a podcast tomorrow. Uh, I have a lot of questions. I still want to ask him. It's going to be at 9 a.m. PST. That's, I guess, Western North American time zone. I live on the West coast of Canada. So if you want to ask questions, we're probably going to be uh, ask, answering questions in the live chat. We're going to be talking about uh, whatever, whatever stuff I didn't get a chance to ask him last week. So if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure to tune in live at 9 a.m. PST. Thanks for watching. And I'm going this time for real.